excited. I'm always excited to have this next guest on. I'm going to let you bring him on because I know you've got some close ties to him. And, you know, when I go back to when I first started following reining horses, uh, this guy was and is and still is, I feel, the king of the reining horse. And you look at everything he's accomplished. Well, he certainly has. Uh, I worked for Bob for eight years in Nebraska, and he was called Mis the Mr. Raining Horse uh, back in those days. Probably still is. Uh, Bob, are you with us this morning? Yeah, I sure am. It's good talking to you guys. Great well, to have you on, Bob. Yeah, it's, hey, it's Bob. like the old days, Bob, with, uh, with Ernie and myself and you. kind of goes back to the old days, doesn't it? Oh, man, it does. It's a lot of great memories, isn't it? Uh, I tell yeah. you what, and you know, I, I, I still, when, when I'm at an event and Bob Loomis is there, there is a sense of, just a, uh, just a sense of, uh, of, as far as swagger that you bring to that whole, that whole industry and the, and the shows. And I mean, you've got the highest respects of everybody. And let's talk about what you're doing right now. You're, you you've uh, taken another outfit to another level and working with them. And we're talking about Silver Spurs. You know, I am really excited uh, about being involved with Silver Spurs and, and having the opportunity to promote some of the greatest stallions in the industry. To me, it, it's just phenomenal uh, for that many great stallions to be in one facility. And they just, you know, they've just added two more uh a sparkling vintage and platinum vintage. They'll be uh, added to the lineup now. And, uh, of course, Chrome Belt Mercedes and Smoking Wiz, better known as Hamster, uh, they both stand at my ranch uh, in Oklahoma. And the rest of the stallions stand at uh, Michael and Michelle Maiola's ranch in Arizona. And uh, it, it's just exciting. Like, this year, I've bred all my mares to several of the Silver Spur stallions because I wanted to have babies on the ranch to represent uh, a large number of the Silver Spurs. Well, if people come to my ranch in Oklahoma, they can see a variety of babies and then go to Arizona uh, to the Silver Spurs ranch and see a lot of them. And it's just really been a lot of fun. Bob, what, what traits, I mean, there's so, there, there, a lot of the traits, of course, are common across all the horse, but what specific traits are you looking for that, that are being passed on by these horses? Well, you know, to me, confirmation is, is very important. Uh, natural talent is very important, but the natural talent, the confirmation don't do you much good if the horse doesn't have a tremendous mind and trainability. Uh, horses that want to let you train them, these are qualities that you can't see. They, they're qualities that come uh, in, in genetic packages. Like you take the, the stallions that have the great minds and, and would let people train them and that wanted to uh, help you and the horses that could, could mark a 230, uh, a horse that can mark that kind of a score is a great talent with a great mind. And to me, that mind is everything, the trainability factor. Bob, we've seen that over the years, haven't we, from your horses uh, back, uh, like we talked about in the old days, Top Sail Cody, Top Sail Wiz, they're not with us anymore, but they had so much of an impact on the industry, and I think you hit the nail on the head. They had the trainability in the minds that would let the their offspring and themselves, but their offspring excel in the industry. I think that's, uh, I really think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, the mind controls the body. So if you don't have the mind, it's hard to train the body. Well, that's so true, Joe. You know, you can have horses, the greatest talents in the world, and, and if they don't have the mental uh, trainability, uh, they're, they're, it just doesn't work. 
And, and you know, those great minds, they come in families, uh, you know, like mares. I, I have won more money on horses with great minds that, that I've actually, I've had horses that had exceptional talent, but they wouldn't give it all to you. And, and I mean, I think that's a quality that I've always looked for, not only just in stallions, but in my mares also. Absolutely. Bob, we touched on the training aspect. Uh, you did a good job explaining, but you need the mind to train the body. Uh, how do you think, let's delve into a little different area now. How are training methods now different than what I say in the old days, years ago? Do you want to touch on that? I think that'd be very interesting for our listeners. Oh, you bet. That, that's a great subject now. We'll enjoy talking about that. Yes. Uh, how, how do they differ? Are the training techniques now different than in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Oh, definitely. You know, uh, of course, I, I first started in the 60s. I, I started training professionally in 66. So I, I've seen the training techniques evolve tremendously like you know i think uh the 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 east coast reigning horse was a very smooth you know where he uh smooths things up a lot but then when the west coast got involved and they brought the bridle horse into the uh deal when we got the the east coast and the West Coast, the different training methods from both ends of the country, which were very different back in the early days, and took the best of both. Uh, that's basically what we have today. We have the bridle horse, and I I've watched the reigning horse just get broker and broker and broker over the years. And what they're doing today is way more than they were doing in the 70s. Uh, you know, about the time you get to think, well, you know, that's about as much as a horse can do, all of a sudden <clears throat> you're seeing these horses involved to, to do more. Yes, that's right. Uh, sometimes we see the modern reigning horse and the plus one, plus one and a half spins and stops, circles and so forth. We think, how can a horse do more than that? Well, they're doing much more than they were 15 or 20 years ago. And I'm like you, Bob, with our breeding programs evolving, uh, yours being one of the main ones, and our training techniques evolving. I think we'd be shocked at what the reigning horse and even a pro course is going to be like 10 or 15 years from now. Well, you know, another thing, Joe, back in the early days, nobody raised reigning horses. Uh, I remember when I would, I would start 30 head of two-year-old uh, cutters, runners, halter horses to find one that I could go win on. And that was basically why I started a breeding program years ago. Uh, every time I saw a really good mare show, I kept my eye on her. And when her show career was over, I'd go try to get her bought. <laughs> and... Uh, and, you know, that that was kind of the beginning. And when I first started riding for Willowbrook, they, most of their bird mares were halter horses with big records, glacial horses with big records. And Joe Cody was just such an incredible performance sire that he took it to another level. Well, now today, there's all these great show mares being bred to all of these great studs that have won so much. And we have enhanced the talent of these horses. You know, you go to a show now, Joe, and there's a smorgasbord of great talent. There's tons of young people that can really train and show a horse. And back in the day, uh, man, when we got a really great one, uh, we did everything but take it to the house because they were hard to find. Yeah, it, it, is, it has definitely evolved so much, Bob. You mentioned in the old days, you might try 25 or 32-year-olds to find one 
really good one. I'd say nowadays, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, if you start, have 10 two-year-olds, you're going to find seven or eight out of the 10 of these well-bred horses uh, that are going to be very nice reigning horses, the top end excellent, and the other two or three are going to make uh, nice non-pro horses be very useful for someone. Wouldn't you agree with that? The percentages just flipped around. Oh, man, I agree with that 100%. You know, if, if you take these colts out of these great mares and these great beds, and like you say, you start 10 of them, you're going to have 10 random horses. Everything from a top level four to the bottom end would be an outstanding non-pro horse. Uh, and, and anymore, when I say outstanding non-pro horse, I don't mean an average horse. Uh, it takes a great horse to win in the non-pro today. Uh, you know, another thing I, I, that I've noticed and listen to you guys uh, that that has to help the industry is have it, is the evolving of more aged events for these horses. So you don't have to have all your your, your everything put uh, apples in one basket with the paternity. And how how great are these? You see these shows popping up everywhere with big money added to these aged events. Well, you know, that's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing. I remember uh, years ago, uh, I had to drive to Middletown, New York, to the Orange County Fair to go to a $7,500 added open. Uh, now, uh, they, there's running much, much bigger, much better than that everywhere. Uh, and there's so much more money to, to win today with the horses and uh, all of these. There's a lot of great breeding programs now where there's just so many great horses. Uh, it, it just tickles me to death to see how this running horse industry has evolved since 1966. Hey, Bob, we're going to have to let you go. Before I let you go, I want you to give our listeners some contact information, like if they want to get in touch with you. You always got prospects for sale, and you always have advice, and uh, also not only for you, but for Silver Spurs. Well, you bet, and thank you, Eddie, because we're real excited about the 2016 breeding season. We've, we've got this great amount of uh, lineup of stallions, and you can contact me at the Loomis Ranch in Oklahoma. Uh, you can contact my breeding manager at 580-276-7499 or me at 580-276-7498, or you can contact Silver Spur in Arizona. Uh, their contact information is in the Rainer. And I'm sorry I don't have it right here in front of me right now, but uh, Michael and the crew and Michelle, they're always there to help anybody that calls and, and excited to visit with you and help you pick out the very best stallion for your mare. And don't don't forget uh, chromed out Mercedes and, and smoking with a uh, hamster will be at my ranch. And we're looking forward to booking mares for, for people. And, and go to Bob's Facebook page. Pretty neat. Bob Loomis uh, Facebook page. Great, great page. Bob, thanks so much for being part of Better Horses Radio, and we're going to get you back on soon. You're, uh, you're a tremendous uh, honor to have on here and, uh, and and appreciate everything you do for the industry. Well, we enjoy it a ton early, and don't forget to go to the Silver Spurs uh, page also and give our stallions a good look for this year. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Thank you, Bob. Bob. Thanks. Thanks. Joe, yeah, I'll tell you, you what, what, always great to talk to Bob on the phone. Well, Bob, he's one of the cornerstones in the industry, if not the cornerstone. And uh, the knowledge that he has, as he said, he started training in 1966. The knowledge that that man has, uh, gosh, if we had a three-hour show, we could keep going. Right. He's uh, always great to listen to. Let's take a break, come back, and I want to I share an interview I had with Colby Ungenhauer when we come back. 